and good morning YouTube another bright and sunny day here in Cheshire in the UK welcome to Simply Diagnostics before we start don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for the notifications you can also follow me on Twitter at PicoFlu on my Facebook page um, Simply Diagnostics Northwich comments and criticisms always welcome if you've got something to say put it down in the comment box below and uh, we'll get a conversation started thanks for watching today we're working on a 2010 Citroen C3 petrol that's got a rattly camshaft all we're going to be doing today is running through the basics of WPS and how to scope a vehicle with VVT you see it's just the standard uh, 8FP engine uh, I think it's the EP3 is the designation uh, got the exhaust camshaft actuated solenoid there the intake camshaft actuated solenoid down there um, oil levels critical on these engines so it really really pays to watch your oil levels and regular servicing obviously um, so what we're going to do basically we're going to we're going to disable the two uh, the two solenoids and we're going to get some WPS readings from in cylinder um, with the solenoids disconnected and the intake blocked off to give us better uh, valve event definition and then we're going to do it with the solenoids plugged in and we'll, and we'll see what a difference that makes if any Quickly take the, the cover off of the spark plugs. These can these can be a bit, little bit tricky in winter when when the plastic's brittle. Success, we didn't break anything, oil cap back on. Couple of torques, twenties. bit of a pain really this that you've got to do all this um, to access the throttle body housing and the solenoids but it is what it is so that's the airbox access look at the I don't know whether you can see look at the state of that filter there from the breather It's not been changed in a while, has it? Same with old Peugeot Citroen, you spend more time taking plastics off than you do actually working on them. Luckily, somebody's been here before me and broke all the clips, so we don't have too much to worry about in the way of stripping down. And you can see here we've also got two camshaft position sensors, one on the exhaust cam and one on the inlet cam there
Yeah, there's the there's the two position sensors there. Exhaust cam position sensor, intake cam position sensor. Just lift that up off the off the bungs and then move it to one side. We've got access to everything we need now. The exhaust solenoid's down here just by the throttle body housing. We're gonna blank the throttle off there and unplug unplug this one on this side as well. So that's it. Exhaust solenoid unplugged. That's the intake solenoid, should be good now. Yep, intake solenoid unplugged, just a two, two wire. So it's um, fed, uh, permanent terminal 15 and ground switched. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna blank the intake off there. We're not gonna bother doing battle to get the, the pipe off. We'll just do the, uh, we'll just blank it off there at the intake. Standard BMW connectors. And we're just gonna go, we do the do the one at the belt end, but if we can have a look at this. I don't know whether you'll be able to see or not. Get some light in there. It's actually full of oil as well. Which is not a good thing. That's not meant to be full of oil. Standard BMW spark plugs, which were not, that was not tight at all. I've not been in here before, so it's not me that's left that loose. And you can see the, see the oil on the, on the plug. And get a rack for that, I'll wipe that off. So all that oil's now gone down into the cylinder. What I might do is just check the other plugs after, just to make sure that uh, we're good to go. Right, so basically set up for this, we've got the Pico set up, uh, two channels, channel A, we've got the WPS 500, and channel B, we've got a 22 on attenuator and a red lead, just going to a, a coil trigger to sync. We've got WPS on range one, no zoom, into the adapter, straight into the cylinder, we've got all the other coils disabled, we've got the VVT solenoids, both of them disabled, and we've got the intake restricted with one of the yellow caps out the smoke pro kit. As far as the Pico goes, we can see we've got channel A on a on basically on a 14 bar WPS on a 14 bar channel B we've got 1 to 400 volts with a 21 attenuator set up and we've also got a trigger set up here so that uh, we can sync the waveforms if we need to at a later date Right, so now I'm just going to start, I'm going to leave you watching the screen and I'm just going to crank the engine. I'm 
you can see the air, the RPM increase. Um, and you can clearly see here, because we've got the intake restricted, it's using up all the available air in the intake and it's getting less and less and less and less until I stop cranking it. So we just basically just if we just have a look um, between two of the cylinders, two of the compression peaks, obviously this is cylinder number one. Get the zoom overview out of the way. Just drag a ruler across quickly just to check just to see where sparks occurring. We can see it's actually not not far off. But what you can see with the we you, you've got the two compression towers, you've got very, very clear, clearly defined expansion pocket, very, very clearly defined um, valve events. So it gives you with the intake being blocked, it gives you a really nice picture of what's happening with the valves. So then we go over now, if we go over to the bottom right hand corner where the where the green dot is. Let's see if we can get you zoomed in a bit more. Right, so we go over to the bottom right hand corner where the green dot is. We drag a ruler out to the midpoint of the first compression peak. Drag a second ruler out to the midpoint of the second compression peak. Then we go down to the bottom here where it says rulers. Click on that and we want four partitions. Okay, so now we've got our, basically we've got our four segments of the auto cycle. So we've got our power stroke, which it's not strictly a power stroke, it's only an expansion stroke because there's no combustion taking place. So this is the downward travel of the piston. Then we've got um, the exhaust period. Then we've got the intake period. And finally we've got the compression period. And what we can see here, bearing in mind we've got the, the VBT disabled. Um, and so that will obviously um, give us a different a different reading than if we had the VBT solenoids plugged in as regards where, where valves are opening and closing but it gives us a very very good datum if this was a known good it would give us a very good datum um, for another vehicle that we had suspected VBT issues or just even cam timing issues so the first thing I'm going to do is drag a ruler down from the left hand side, the blue ruler, channel A. And I want to put that onto zero, so I just go on to field number one. Click on that, put zero and hit enter. And that will automatically bring the ruler down to the zero point for me. And we'll zoom into that. And we can see our expansion pocket. And we're actually getting... Uh, five, 583 millibars which is probably what about 17 17 inches of mercury something like that and what we're looking at here the exhaust valve event should be roughly um, on, a, on a perfect engine we'd, we'd ideally like halfway up that slope to be crossing the 180 degrees line but we can say roughly between 30 and 50 degrees before bottom dead center um, for any and anything with EBT or anything like that. So we, we drag a ruler from the left and drop it onto the 180 mark. And another ruler from the left. And what we want, we want this one now to go roughly where the, where the, the, the expansion waveform stops coming down and changes direction to go up. When we can help ourselves by putting a filter on it, so if I just go on to channel A, activate filtering, that will give us a bit more definition. Uh, and what we want to see really between that mark and that mark is in between 30 and 50 degrees. So even with the VBT disabled, we can see it's at 45 degrees before bottom dead centre. So we'll keep this as a reference and then we'll see what happens um, when we actually when we plug the VBT solenoids back in right so if we go on to this area here which is um, the period of time when the exhaust valves closing and the intake uh, valves are open 
what we want to see what ideally what we would want to see is the expansion pocket and this period here this should be roughly the same but you can see we've got an extra an extra dip there an extra reduction in in pressure so that tells us that there's something going on with the valves obviously we've got the exhaust um, we've got the intake blocked up um, and we've got the BBT solenoids disconnected so we're not going to see a true reflection like I say all this is for is to get a datum of uninfluenced data by by anything so if you were doing um, a t timing chain job or something like that so if we zoom in that area there what we want to see if we drag a drag a ruler across from the left to the 360 mark it doesn't have to be massively accurate and then the other ruler we drag across from the left to roughly about 20 degrees and what we want to see for, for, for the intake ramp basically it needs to be really in the middle halfway down uh, TDC plus 20 degrees halfway down well, like I said we've got the VVT actuators unplugged so the, the readings are going to be a little bit out so that's, that's basically our, our reference our, our datum and what we'll do now, we'll plug the actuators back in and we'll run the test again. Right, so I'll plug the actuators in, in now. The intake's still blanked off, ignition's still disabled. Um, so we'll run the scope and see what happens. Right, so we've got the two actuators plugged back in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you focused on this and I'm going to crank the vehicle again. Actually, what I'll do first is we'll make a a reference waveform so that's tools reference waveforms channel 8 we'll edit it we'll just turn it black then we can see it and we'll put no actuator so we know that's that's where the actuator is unplugged So we'll save that file as C3 with actuators. We only want the current waveform, we don't need to fill, in, fill everywhere up. And then what we can do, we can compare the two, if there is any difference. Zoom overview out of the way. We can turn channel B off, because we don't really need that. Right, so we've turned, turned channel B off. And what we're going to do, we just drop a zero, zero ruler down for channel A. And we drop a zero ruler down for channel B. And we can measure the expansion pocket for channel A rough weight about 631 millibar what's that about 19 inches of mercury not that it matters because we've got the intake blocked off and then we'll do the same for the reference waveform with no actuators so you can see this uh, there's about 50 millibar difference um, that's all at this moment in time we'll put our two two rulers in, four sections and we've got coming from the left again one to 180 degrees the other one to where the direction of the compression peak changes and we're looking at uh, 41 degrees with the actuator and now if we use the other the other waveform so our reference waveform with no actuators, roughly in the middle, roughly in the middle, we'll turn A off for the moment, and again we we'll get it on the 180. And then where it changes direction 
44 so it's 44 on the one without actuators Forty four on the one without actuators and again is it forty eight on the one with? No, that one's different. Oh forty four forty three, so there's no re no real difference on cranking with the VBT on this engine. Bearing in mind that this is um this has got a faulty chain, so um, there's also low oil level. So you'd have to be you'd have to be a little bit sceptical about these results. You'd have to have a known good. Again, the expansion pocket. If we zoom into that, we can see there's a clear difference. There's a clear difference between the expansion pocket and the intake pocket here. Again, that might be just due to the fact that we've got the uh, the intake blanked off. But like I say, you can clearly you can clearly see the difference. So what we'll do now is we'll unblock the intake, and we'll see we'll we'll run the same test again um, with the intake unblocked and the actuators disconnected. save that just in case it crashes again Pico software has been a bit run today so this is no actuator no restriction so say that and then what immediately you can see you can see the difference in the compressions, how with the with the restriction, the com the compression slowly went down. And with with just the closed throttle, you can see they're only just starting to drop now. Let me just take two two events. We just take two events. You can see we've got far less valve definition. Um, a much smaller expansion pocket here um, less valve definition but we've still got this worrying dip here that I don't really like the look of zero Let's get rid of the reference for now and we drop another line down to the bottom of the That is quite a significant difference, and I, am, I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally want to see that. So I don't know what's going on there. I think that'll be caused by the actual slack in the chain. So yeah, um, on cranking, if you see valve definition like that, you could actually start looking for an, in, an intake, intake blockage, wet air filter, something like that. Um, so it's a, a, a nice diagnostic help. Um, when you're looking at stuff, you see valve events like that so clearly defined, so clearly defined, you'd really want to start examining the intake system. Right, so as a, just to recap on this, um, basically the car came in with no faults, um, just a rattly chain. There's a, no no camshaft crankshaft correlation codes, no cam to cam correlation codes, nothing. Uh, just a noise complaint but we can clearly see by that that the, the valve timing is out there's something that the engine's not happy with and requires further investigation yeah, so don't forget to follow me on twitter at pico flu jump over onto my business page on facebook at simply diagnostics northwich and if you like the video leave us a thumbs up if you didn't leave a thumbs down and comment why that'd be awesome and uh, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for notifications thanks for watching